should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. What up? What's happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, and I'm really pumped about this next guest. On the phone line, she was a star this season on the very funny show known as Baskets on FX. On the phone line is the very funny comedian and actress known as Martha Kelly. What's up? Hi. <laughs> um, thanks for having me on. Of course. I was immediately flattered by your character on Baskets because the show, obviously, everyone thinks about Louis Anderson and Zach Galifianakis, but what you brought to that show was comedy gold. I mean, it's one of the most bizarre shows I've ever seen, and when you describe it to somebody, they think it's like a lame show, but you guys made it seem believable. It's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, thanks, Ryan. That's really sweet. I really appreciate it. So how did you get your foot in the door on the show? Because it seems like this was one of your first acting performances. So how did you get the foot in the door? Um, well, Zach just called me out of the blue in January of 2014 and said that he was going to do a TV show and wanted me to play a part on it. Um, and that, and then I talked to him about it and, um, we did it (laughs) and, uh, he basically just wanted me to act the way I normally do in real life, uh. Except I'm not exactly the same as the character, but um, my, like, the way I talk and my lack of uh, emotion and stuff is the same. How did you first meet Zach? Were you guys doing comedy together? Was he one of your mentors? How did you first meet Zach Galifianakis? Um, I met him when we were doing an open mic in... uh, Culver City in uh, California in, like, 98, I think. And um, we used to go to this uh, open mic at a a coffee house called Pedersen's in Culver City. And um, Tig used to go there, too, and a lot of other really funny comics. And and, uh, so that's where we met, just at an open mic. So now, when you get onto the show, did him and Louis Anderson give you any advice since they have prior acting experience, or did you just kind of go with what he said, which was being your own character? Um, Zach was, like, oh, over-the-top helpful. Like, the first day that I got there on the pilot, he just walked up and hugged me and said... Don't worry about anything. This is just supposed to be fun. Just ask however, say your lines however you would normally say them, and don't worry about anything. And um, that was really helpful. There were some scenes where, um, where like, it's really easy for me to get, um, like, uh, not focus on what's actually happening in the moment and just be thinking about other stuff. So there were definitely times where Jonathan Kreisel or Zach would be like, Hey, you're, um, this is what's going on in the scene. And maybe we'll do another take where you could kind of be more actually doing the scene instead. Like sometimes I'd be kind of too flat probably, but they never were, critical they would just be like hey i think your character is feeling this in this scene let's try it again and um they were super helpful but it mostly was just really fun and like um just hanging out with great people all day every day for two and a half months it was one of the sweetest times of my whole life one of my favorite scenes with your character on the show is when you're talking to the boss in the show and he doesn't want to fire you because you can't get any sales 
And then you're talking to Louis Anderson and Zach about it later, trying to pitch the sales for Costco, and your line goes to a thing about how you don't want to make him fire you because you feel bad, and a normal person would want to not get fired, but your character felt bad that he would have to fire you. And that was some of the funniest writing I have ever seen. The way you guys pulled it off, it's a great show. Did you know that it would do that well in the beginning? Um, no, but I definitely, um, feel like the writers that we had, which, uh, Jonathan Kreisel and Zach were also part of the writing team, and then the other writers were Graham Wegner, Sam Hunter, and, uh, Rebecca Drysdale, and they are, like, they came up with all that stuff, and everything about the character that's about my character that's not just two-dimensional because of those writers. Like, they... I, I didn't know whether other people would um, be excited about the show, but when I read the script, I loved it because I just think the, the writers were amazing. Now, every show, every movie, every play has outtakes because you're not going to be perfect every single time. But did you guys have a lot of outtakes and funny times just because the show is so bizarre and you have Louie Anderson and drag? Were there a lot of times where you guys are joking because it's just such a bizarre show? Yeah, like Zach um, and Louie would both go off the script a lot and many times it would make me burst out laughing Uh, and they would make each other burst out laughing too like they're really funny um in the in the first episode when louis drinking the uh vitamin water from costco and um chokes on it and spits it out yeah that was not in the script, and <laughs> so they, we both, we all burst out laughing when he did that, but they just cut it before we started laughing and just showed him choking. But, yeah, that, they were, it was really hard not to laugh a lot of the time because of those guys. What was Louis Anderson like on set? Would he talk during the non-acting scenes, like when you guys were taking breaks? Would he be by himself? What was the vibe like on set? Um, it was really nice. Uh, I was um, I was worried before I did it because I've never done anything like this before, and you get the impression from movies and stuff that <clears throat> any Hollywood type situation is going to be full of assholes, but it wasn't like that at all, and. Uh, I, I did really, I'm um, lucky, like, I got to hang out with Louie and Zach between scenes and also the crew, and we're just great people. So, like, between scenes, a lot of times you'd go in, we were always on location, so you'd go into a um, part of the house or whatever they were filming in and just hang out and talk, and... Um, Lou's always been really sweet and supportive and, and fun to hang out with. And everybody just hung out with each other. It wasn't like the, the, uh, actors stayed separate from the crew, you know? Were there any times though when you guys would get a bit annoyed with each other or have arguments just because you're by each other for so long making 10 episodes? Were there ever any times that the tensions got high? I don't, I definitely didn't experience anything like that except on my, on my part one night when we were filming the coyote scene, um, where we're driving the coyote out to the desert, um, that was like the, I think it was the second or third day in a row of, of, uh, not getting very much sleep, and I was nervous that that dog, who was actually half coyote in real life, I was nervous that she was going to jump out of the car and we were filming next to a really busy highway. And I just was tired, and I snapped at um, someone about making, like, a, that. I just was like that, I, I and I apologize. That's the only tension I... I'm aware of on the set was when I was tired and kind of was an asshole 
uh, and then apologized, and it wasn't like there was definitely Zach and Jonathan and the producers were all the kind of people who do not um, take out any tension on anyone else, and so everyone else, they set that example, you know? So everybody... Uh, also, I'm sorry I'm being long-winded, but, like, it was so fun to be there that um, I don't think that people felt uh, frustrated very often, you know? Did you guys find out yet if there's going to be a season two or not? Yeah, I can't remember when we find... I think we found out in February, and um, they have written the episodes, and then we are going to shoot them in, uh, from mid-September through November, I think. What is that moment like, Martha, where the first TV show you're ever on was a hit on a major TV network like FX, and it gets renewed? How awesome was that? It's really great. Um, my life is not very different from what it was before. Well, it's different because I'm, like, living in my own apartment and um, paying my rent and stuff, but um, it's not different in any other ways, so it's not like, um, it's not like that, uh, it's not like your whole world is different, it's just nice to be able to pay bills and stuff, but mostly I was excited because, uh, I missed the people that I worked with, and I knew when we got a season two, we would mostly all get to be together again. And I love Zach like crazy, so I'm super excited we'll get to hang out again and do the show. How great. Getting paid. Well, that's always good, too, to be getting paid to be on a great show like Baskets. And speaking of that, how has the fan base been? overall treating you guys during these 10 episodes so far? Well, um, any time that I've encountered people who watch the show, they've been super sweet. Um, it's not like I live in Austin and I, I moved here to work on stand up again. And, uh, it's not like I run into people every day who say they've seen the show, but, um, when it, when it does happen, they're really sweet. It's really nice. So it's a really lucky thing to have happen. Now, would you want to be one of the next big comics to be on TV? Like, would you want this show to help you get into movies and into other TV shows, let's say within the next five to ten years? Or are you right now just focusing on baskets? Um, I've done a couple of other acting jobs since then, but definitely only because of baskets did I get those jobs. Um, and, uh, I mean, I would love to never have to have a real job again. Is that what, is that what I mean? Uh, I don't know about, um, I just assume always that, Nothing is going to last because mostly in the entertainment industry, things don't last. So um, I'm really happy I got to do it right now, but I, I'm just assuming it'll, you know, it'll all dry up fairly quickly. And then I'll just do other, I'll keep doing stand up and, and uh, maybe start a dog walking agency. How has your comedy been doing? Because you're based out of Texas. Have things been growing since your time on Baskets? How has everything been with your comedy? Um, I Living in Austin, is this a great time to live here and do stand-up because there's a great comedy scene here? Um, and then because of Baskets, I've... I've started to get opportunities to headline and stuff, which is really uh, crazy and fortunate. And uh, and I'm doing, I'm taping a half hour for Comedy Central next week, and that's definitely because of baskets. So, uh, yeah, it's, 
totally helped my stand up. And then living in Austin is like it's it's maybe the most fun place to do stand up in the country and uh so it's fun and it's good if you want to work on it, you can really work on it here. You're on a hit TV show. You're doing a bunch of comedy shows. You're going to be on Comedy Central. Do you ever find yourself getting overwhelmed? Or are you a person where you're just appreciating every moment of it? Um, the, the only times I feel overwhelmed is if I am afraid that I'm going to disappoint people. Like, uh, if I... Um, if I headline at a club, I don't. I don't want to. If people come because of baskets, which some people do, it's not a huge amount, but um, I don't want them to be disappointed if they like the show and then see me in person. And what I don't know what people what their expectations are, but I don't even know if it's overwhelming or just kind of stuff I worry about. But it's mostly. Uh, like a million times better than any other job I've ever had where I would get overwhelmed with work, with real work. You know, this isn't really work. It's like doing something that's super fun and creative and getting to not have to have a real job. It's, it's, uh, It's all really good. The only time it's not good is when my own insecurities get in the way but the actual circumstances are amazing now what type of person are you when fans approach you because i wouldn't say i i have fans per se but i'm on the radio occasionally here in tampa bay and i do this award-winning podcast so i get recognized a lot just because i'm six foot eight and for me it's often a bit awkward because i might not be in the mood to talk or I run out of things to say. So are you a person where you talk a lot to the fans, or do you get overwhelmed at times in these social situations? Um, I don't have it happen that much, and when, whenever it does happen, it's just um, really sweet. And, like, the first time I was doing a, um, a show in Austin, a stand-up show, and this guy and girl, really young, came up to me before the show and said that they love baskets. And I almost started to cry because it was so, it meant so much to me that they would say that they were fans of the show. Like, I never, um, it's not, (laughs) it's not like I'm getting mobbed by people wanting autographs or anything. It's like, once in a while, people will be like, hey, you're on that show. I really like it. And then I just feel super lucky. So now with season two coming up next year in 2017, will we see more romance between Martha and Dale? Have you heard anything about the team possibly putting that into season two? Because that was one of the biggest twists in the whole show. I actually don't know. um what they're going to do because I'm not one of the writers. I did have like one day where I via Skype met with the writer's room and they told me some of the stuff they were planning on. But in season one, I I met with the writer's room and they had ideas they were planning on. And then a lot of it changed between that and the time they actually um, finish the script. So I I do think that there will be some storyline involving Dale and Chip and having tension over um, which one of them my character is is more friends with or whatever, uh, loyal to. I don't know if they... I don't think it's ever going to be that Chip has any romantic feelings for my character, but I think he, his character doesn't want his brother to have more of my character's attention, you know? But I don't know if that'll be a big storyline or not. I, I, I probably won't get the script for at least a couple months. Now, before I let you go, where can people find your work online if they want to book you for a comedy show or just see what you're up to? 
Well, um, I'm on uh, Facebook and Twitter, but I also have kind of a shitty website <laughs> where I list my usually keep it up to date with my stand, live stand-up shows and then also my um, my manager's contact information and the my agents who book me on the road. Their contact information is on my website, so people could find it that way. And I'm going to fix up my website because it's, it's not super great right now. But it has information on it. But uh, I don't know. Does that answer, does that answer your question? So. Yeah. I'll be sure to list all the info on my podcast description and on my Twitter because I was so drawn in by your character and by the show. I didn't know what to expect watching it, but it was so captivating and it was so funny that I'm really glad you guys have a season two and it was a lot of fun having you on Happy Hour. Well, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate you having me on. Thanks a lot. Sounds good. Keep up the good work, and I would love to have you on again once Season 2 gets closer. Yeah, that would be great. I'd love to. Sounds good. Keep up the good work, Martha. Okay, thanks, Ryan. You too. All right, bye. Bye. And there was Martha Kelly from the hit show on FX, Baskets, as she called into Happy Hour. If you guys have On Demand or you have FX Now or Hulu, you guys have to watch Baskets. It is one of the most bizarre, odd, strange, and weirdest shows I have ever seen in my life. But it's also one of the most genuine and funny shows I have ever seen. Martha Kelly's character is so awkward that it is amazing for the show. And Louie Anderson comes off so believable as a woman in drag on the show. So check it out. It's on FX now. It's on demand for your local cable provider and on Hulu. If you are a fan of Martha Kelly or Baskets and you want to check out my work, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is go to the Google Play or iPhone shop, search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio, and you can hear all 150 interviews I have done since last August. Tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Email me, RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. And guess what my website is ryanhoppyradio.com once again shout out to martha kelly for coming on happy hour go check out baskets and this has been happy hour i am your host ryan hoppy saying peace out happy hour happy hour